Okay, I had quite a few people want to see the inside of the Brownings and show the difference between the receivers, the ones with the regular uh, 23 channel receiver dial, and the ones with the high frequency extension that has, you know, like 1 to 30 and then 30 to 60 or something approximately like that. So we uh, took the covers off and stripped them down and I'm going to show you some insides of them. It's very little difference. It's kind of not worth it, but, uh, you know, people want to see with their own eyes. So here's the uh, original one stripped from the top. You really can't see any difference except... This is where the two um, extra crystals would go for fixed frequency on their original model in them blue um, slots there. Those are the uh, crystal sockets, X1 and X2, marked, um, where's my finger? There you are, right here. And those correspond to this radio with the manual single dial which would give you the VFO 0 to about channel uh, 28 or so. And then X1, X2 you would put in, get an external crystal for a fixed channel. Let's say you get a crystal for channel, I don't know, 38. Because you want to go to 38 sideband, you would put the 38 crystal or whatever you want into the uh, X1 and X2 slots here. Right? Um, so that's the crystal slots. Now this one from the factory that has the dual dial, the CB and the high frequency, the dual dial there, you got the um, 1 through uh, 28 like on the other one on top. And on the bottom dual scale, you got the um, up to 59, 595 or channel 60 basically on the high frequency. That's the dual dial or the dual VFO. You only got one crystal slot from the factory okay so of course here they took away the um, X2 and you only have the one crystal slot right here and you got the holes for the other one so other than that that's the only differences up top of these units between the ones with the high frequency and the ones that don't of course the dial the dual dial and the single dial are different too but other than that it's exactly the same radio and while I'm on that exactly the same I don't know I probably got I'd say 12 Mark 3's right now in various condition from mint to junkers uh, about 12 sets of Mark 3's I probably had or played with or worked on had I don't know 50 or 100 over my lifetime and I've probably seen a two, three hundred over my lifetime. I've never seen any that had a different size that a couple people were saying. Like, they made different sizes and all that. Not for the Mark III's. They did for some of the earlier ones, especially the R27, you know, R2700. They made a different styles in them. A little bit different um, size cabinets and all that. But definitely not the Mark III, especially the receiver. The transmitter, they did make the... AM only transmitter, uh, which was a lot smaller, about the size of the amplifier, as it was AM only, one of my favorite transmitters, by the way. But um, all the Mark III SSBs, both transmitter and receiver, the SSB versions, are all the same size. I've never seen one that had a different size, and they all the same style. Even these two, you know, like I say, the only difference is the uh, high frequency extension on this one and the um, two crystals and the regular 23 on that one. I have seen different colored um, grills and I have seen a couple of different odd colors of the, um, the cabinet where the color is a little off, a little greenish, you know, not quite the same. I don't know if that's factory or somebody tried to clean it or what but I've seen different colored grills different colored um, uh, chassis I haven't paid attention to the Eagles or not so I don't know if they had different Eagles for the Mark 3 or not but for sure the chassis and the sides have all been the same for the Mark 3's 
So I guess that's enough for the um, top talk and all that. We're going to turn them both over and go to the bottom. And by the way, first thing I see here, that's the ping cap location. The ping is in the receiver. And what that does is it holds the... Um, when you key down, that cap is um, fully charged up when you first key down. And when you key, um, the transmitter cuts off the voltage going to the receiver. But that cap holds it on for a couple seconds or depending on how big of a cap you have. So it keeps the voltage for the receiver going until that cap discharges. And that's what's causing the ping is that cap is holding the charge and it discharges. Um, the radio will work fine without the cap, I think, or put a little small one UF in there if you want some. But um, um, the larger you go with the cap, the longer it holds the charge and the longer ping you got. You start going with long pins, pings, it starts hurting the relay. And also this um, quarter watt resistor right here. Red, red, red. I think that's 2.2K. Hit, hit my Wheaties today so the brain isn't fully working and then um, that's the one here um, it is stress that resistor because that resi resistor is also in line for the voltage going to the cap and you put too large a cap in there it stresses that resistor and the relay but anyway um, it's the same radio top and bottom high frequency version here and low frequency there but all they did was this is the original single band one right this here is the crystal for the VFO and it's wired directly um, to the tube and the voltage is switched on by the um, VFO crystal switch here so it switches on the voltage for the tube and the crystal is wired in permanently right to the socket. Uh, this version actually worked better than the newer version. And I'll get to why in just a second. And here's underneath the two um, XTAL or the two uh, extra crystal sockets <clears throat> right here for this version. Also going to the switch. So you're either on this crystal for the VFO directly or you're bypassing the VFO and going to these um, individual uh, crystals right here, XTL1, XTL2 on this version. Now here's the um, factory high frequency model, which has also been modded for lowers. I didn't know that until I took the um, bottom off of this and I didn't do any mods to it. Just got a bunch of them um, as is. And when I took the cover off of here, here is the um, one XTAL slot, the one crystal slot. And if you notice where this one had the crystal going to, this one has a wire going to it, this red and white wire he, over here to the switch. And what that does, because you can't wire the crystal directly, because you need to switch crystals um, for that dual band VFO. And they moved the crystals on the other side of this switch. So basically on um, CB, I think it's this one. You're switching in. Yep, going by the arms, um, wipers of the, um, of the switch. You're switching in this crystal. And it's even marked 31.4 megahertz for 1 to 23 for the stock channels that's the crystal you need um, going to the second position which is the high frequency where'd you go where'd you go I had you somewhere oh there you are you're tucked in under there if I can zoom in maybe a little bit come on camera there you go 31.720 I don't know if that's the exact one you need but um, that's the crystal that's wired in for the high frequency on this radio so you go to HF you're switching to that and then this one's been modified for lowers you go to that third 
XTL position, you're actually not going to this crystal socket here. That's not in circuit anymore. That's this um, third crystal right here. And if you could see it, it's 31.1 megahertz. So when you go to that third XTAL position, because it has this crystal here, it's going to be 30 below, you know, uh, the standard crystal. Since this one is 31.4 and this one's 31.1. That one is 30 channels below. So when I go to um, XTAL, it's going to go to that 31.1 position. And it's going to be 30 below whatever I am on the dial up here. So that's how you get the lower zone, this one. And you actually have to calculate that, you know, like if you're on one, you're going to be 30 below one and et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's probably best to use a free counter if you're going to um, do that. There is no dial that I know of that anybody made factory or aftermarket that has the um, lowers on the dial. Also on this version, it was a little bit more problematic than the first version because crystals, you know, oscillate, you know, a little bit of RF, but they don't, um, that RF doesn't like to travel. It likes to be close you know, to whatever is connected to, like this one, you know, it's, con it's soldered right there to the tube, you know, it drives the tube, everything's good to go. Whereas over here, the crystals here, it goes through the switch, and if the switch is dirty or you're not getting full contact, you're going to have problems, and there are a lot of problems with that because of the switch, you know, getting dirty, and also, it's got to oscillate all through this wire here, all the way over here to get to the same point on the tube. So it's not as solid as a circuit as this one here. But, you know, everybody wants the channel. So, you know, that's what they had to do is go through the switch and wire, you know, this long wire over here. And um, frequency does not like to go through long wires. It likes to be nice and close to whatever it's trying to drive or oscillate. <laughs> On the Mark IVs, what Browning did, they still had the same switch, but they had a little crystal uh, board with some transistors, and the switch would turn on the transistors to ground the crystal on the board, and then the board would be, you know, close, mounted right about here, and it would be very close to where it needs to go to, so you wouldn't have this long wiring arrangement. And also the RF from the crystals would not go through the switch like on this one. It went to the board to the transistor and the transistor would provide a ground. So that's a better um, arrangement on the Mark IVs and the 4As than they are on the 3s. I have seen a couple of the 3s that had that board in it. I don't know if somebody modded that or made that or if that was factory on some of the later versions. I don't know. Not that much of an expert, but I have seen a couple of um, Mark III's that had the board here. And it had those crystals mounted on the board. And again, the, um, the uh, tune switch, that's what Browning calls it, that tuning switch, would switch the um, transistors on the board and that would fire the... Um, correct crystal for it and, it and that worked better than again having a crystal you know running here going through the switch the rf out the crystal and then through the long wire sometimes the crystals don't want to oscillate and you take the crystal out and put it in a crystal tester and they'll read good but they just don't quite have enough oomph to drive you know through the switch and all the way over here so again um that wasn't the best arrangement and actually if you are a pretty good tech and know you know how this stuff works and what you're doing you can get the board from a four or a junker if you can find one and wire in the board here and move the crystals to the board and wire it in over here and that'd be a better radio for it but everything else is the same you know that's the underneath of this um mark three with the high frequency extension uh somebody put in a um uh, snap in cap there not very well and um, put in some great big giant diodes there you know not very well um, actually I think on the receiver 
I think I saw this one on Facebook uh, a few weeks ago. Somebody had one of these, a dual diode. That's three legs. Dual diode on the receiver. That is just two diodes in one package uh, connected together, two diodes. And they had a short in it, and they're like, you know, how do I replace that and all that? And it, and an easier, cheaper thing to do is just get two regular diodes, which these are. I don't know why they needed one so doggone big. And just wire in two regular diodes to the circuit, and somebody put in that snap capacitor. Not pretty. Um, it's like they did it right, but boy, they, somebody did some horrible soldering, you know, on that. But... Other than that, don't look too bad. But anyway, same radio. They just played around with the crystals and added crystals to get the high frequency on the VFO and the dial. And this is the um, earlier one with the single dial. All of them are the same size, people. They're, they didn't make different sides. Browning Mark Threes and all that. And um, <laughs> that's some of my... All right, that's it for this one. Bye.